All right, Wang Chung. Ah, Wang Chung is a very interesting person. I'll be honest with you, before uh, this class, I never heard of the guy. But I enjoyed reading about him. Uh, of course, I read more than just what was in the book. Uh, self-made, self-educated for the most part. Uh, didn't belong to a particular school of thinking. Didn't have a particular tradition that followed him. He was sort of one of a kind. Um, as you can gather, I hope, from the reading, uh, Wang Chung is not, uh, in any sense, a believer in religion. Now, I can't say that he's an atheist. It's not clear whether he thinks that there's a God or not, but it is clear that he thinks that any attention given to the gods or God is a waste of time. He says that the heavens are spontaneous. Uh, so he isn't, strictly speaking, denying a supernatural world. He's simply saying that it doesn't respond to us. It is of no use, no importance to call on it. The heavens, because they do what they do. The divine does what it does. It has its own reasons and uh, or, or no reason at all. I mean, he, what's the, the idea behind spontaneity is that there's no reason at all. They just do what they do. It just is what it is. And all you can do as a human being is ride with the time. You have no way of controlling them. You have no way of encouraging them. You know, have no way of uh, affecting which way they go. So the universe is spontaneous. It is random. It does what it does. And no amount of uh, human input really makes a difference. Um, now, notice that this means uh, that uh, life is essentially uh, meaningless uh, insofar as um, a meaning that comes from outside. Uh, his call is then for the meaning to come from inside, that we have to make our own meaning. We have to make our own way in the world uh, and not give the heavens a second thought. Um, he, he also wants to close the door on the hereafter. He, um, he, he, he is empirical, and you'll remember from the epistemology class that that means he wants evidence, physical evidence, and uh, that without that evidence, without that physical proof, nothing is real. He says of the heavens, they have no mouth, they have no eyes. How do I know? Because the earth, which is its uh, sibling, its, its kinsman, uh, has no eyes and no mouth. The rocks have no eyes. Uh, the oceans have no mouth. They are not like us. They're different. Um, of the idea of the hereafter, he says, look, um, you can't see a ghost. You haven't, no one has ever seen a ghost. No one has ever seen a spirit. You can't, if you're going to say that a human being has a spirit, then you have to say that their clothes must have souls too. Otherwise, you'd have a bunch of naked people running around. Uh, naked ghosts running around. And whenever people tell about ghosts, they're never naked. They always have clothes on. And he says, it's just ridiculous. The, the whole idea of, of a continuity after death is absurd. Um, the, the physical is part of what it is to be us. Uh, that it is part of us to be fat or skinny, uh, short or tall, uh, that uh, I would not be the same if, person if I uh, had only one hand or uh, was six foot ten. Uh, it would be make a different person out of me or out of you or out of Wang Chung. And as a result, uh, the physical is essential to human beings. Uh, so to talk about the merely spiritual human being, or the, the, the purely spiritual component of a human being is nonsense. Uh, human beings are physical as well as uh, spiritual, if souls even exist. And it's not even clear that souls do exist to him, again, because there isn't any empirical evidence for it. He can find no demonstration that there are such things. Uh, he seems to think that uh, our life, uh, like that of the animals, comes and goes. We live, then we die. 
uh, we are than we aren't. And that this is not a tragedy. Uh, this is not something that should panic us. It's just how things are. And we should live accordingly. Now, this speaks directly to some of your responses to my questions about why would the, uh, philosophically speaking, why does the existence of the divine matter? Uh, some of you argued that, that only from the divine, uh, the presence of a divine, could it be that life has any meaning? Um, Wang Chung says, you are, you're right. Uh, if you're talking about outside meaning, but if you're talking about what you want life to mean, what you want life to be, there's nobody to stop you from making your life that way or seeing your life that way. If there is no heavens, uh, that we make our own meaning, we make our own life. Uh, and he would say there's evidence that that's true about many things. So why wouldn't it be true about uh, our life? Uh, it is true. Uh, famously, uh, Dostoevsky said, if, if there were no God, then we could do anything. Uh, he, of course, was thinking of we could only do evil things. Uh, but, of course, he's wrong about that. Um, human beings stop each other from doing things all the time. Um, you know, there are people who will not run a stoplight in the middle of the night. So why should we think that, that uh, because the law says you don't do that. So why do we need uh, God to keep people moral? When we look back at our ethics discussions, the only mention of the divine was in context of religion, of, of political sovereignty. Uh, in fact, Plato spends the whole euthyphro trying to prove to us that the gods have no input into uh, uh, our, our moral affairs, that, that, that the gods themselves, uh, now, and you'll say, well, okay, that's Plato and he's talking about gods. The same argument works, though, if we're talking about one god. If the one god is perfect, perfect, then our input can't change the perfection of the divine. Why then should the divine be interested in us? Uh, well, because we are his creation. Okay, but then we come to that question. Uh, when he says something is good, is he saying it's good because it is good in and of itself? Or is it saying it's good because it is good? Uh, he says so. If he changed his mind, you said we couldn't change his mind. Perfect beings can't change their mind. Uh, I mean, not getting too heavy about it, uh, it's certainly the case that uh, we have accounts in the Old Testament of God, in fact, changing his mind. The whole point of prayer often, uh, as we, we see in the New Testament, when Jesus prays uh, that, that let this cup be taken from me, he believes that God changes his mind. Um, so the perfect can change its mind. Um, so something could be good today and not good tomorrow. The, the uh, during that brief period of time when the the wicked Bible I talked about in class was out there, adultery was a moral necessity, and all those people who weren't doing it were being immoral. We don't know. But if something is called good by God because it is good in and of itself, I mean, would a square become a circle if God called it a circle? Or wouldn't a circle always be that definition? that we have from Euclid, that collection of all points equidistant from the same point on the same plane. Is it a circle because that's what it is? That's what a circle is, essentially? Or is it only a circle because God calls it a circle? And the great majority of philosophers have always said it's a circle because it's a circle. So philosophically, you don't need God for ethics. Philosophically, you don't need God for meaning in life. Now, the last appeal some of you made to uh, the importance of God in philosophy uh, was to talk about what we in the philosophy business call the God of the gaps, that the, there aren't things, there are things we can't explain, there are things we don't understand, and therefore we say God. I, I, that's just, uh, if uh, I don't know is the same as saying God, then uh, I, I, God is not nearly so important as, as he, uh, 
uh, seems to be appears to be. Uh, furthermore, this I don't know thing uh, doesn't do anything in order to talk about the kinds of religious commitments people tend to have regarding God. So uh, there were a couple people who said, well, it doesn't really have a role in philosophical thinking. Uh, well, that's going too far um, because wisdom has something to do with understanding what it is to be human. And religion is essentially a human activity. Uh, there must be some philosophical investigation. And uh, so we've seen these first attempts uh, trying to prove the existence of God, trying to talk about how perhaps uh, you don't need God um, to understand the world. Um, th these are uh, ways in which we approach the problems of uh, religion from a philosophical standpoint. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this posted, and then the next one will be out in a little bit. Uh, everything will be ready to go. The quiz will be posted on Monday night uh, at 10 o'clock. We will have the conference at 10 o'clock. Uh, try to have viewed. I will make sure everything gets up and posted so you can view it. I don't intend to post a uh, study sheet this time. I intend for you to uh, be prepared on your own using these notes here. I, I will try to do a summary uh, as the part of the ending lecture for the semester or for this section. And uh, I'm hoping that will be all you need in order to get through the test. Okay. Uh, more later. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.